Oh. Good evening. I see Mr. Webb has addressed uh, another of his videos to the small band of what he once called the the desperate men. Apparently, he's not bothered us by us in the slightest, but has chosen to make a video that's running for nearly eight and a half minutes. It's a fascinating way to not be bothered. Um, I'm reminded by this quote from a Russian movie. I chased you for three days to say how indifferent you are to me. That's from a movie called An Ordinary Miracle from 1964. It's based on a play originally by a gentleman called Giovanni Schwartz. Um, in any case, Webb made a, a number of points in that video. He argued that um, about white saver complexes and white liberal middle class people. Uh, the white middle class bit made me laugh. Well, let's put it this way. It made me laugh no end. I grew up in the East End of London and come from a very working class background. And that had me dying rolling on the floor. What I was thinking is, Webb, you're having an effing bubble uh, at that point. Uh, really, Webb. You're just trying to create a box and shovel people into it so you can shut them up when I'm not that idiotic to play along with it. Um, in any case, but mentioning pre elements of prejudice in the UK, it, Webb is um, not endlessly older than me. I'm not as young as I'd like to be. We all get old. Uh, I'm beginning to feel the effects of my age as I'm entering my 50s. Um, I'm beginning to feel like, a, a, you know, I was there when the dinosaurs roamed around the earth. But Webb will remember what I'm about to put on the screen because Mr. Webb, if he's in his 70s, would have been a teenager or a kid in his late childhood when some of this kicked off. Here's the Kane Web Service. Kane Web Service is hosted by the University of Ulster. And it archives a load of stuff around the troubles and the backgrounds of it. Um, now, some of Webb's viewers are too young to remember this and won't be really very familiar with what's in here. And this is all ancient history to them or is complicated old rubbish. They don't want to know about it or it's just people moaning and groaning. We'll leave them aside because as I can't, you can't educate people unless they wish to be educated is, is an old saying. But there are those on Webb's channel who are willing to basically try and at least listen to another point of view, I've noticed, if you try and explain it. This is the key events from the civil rights campaign of 1964 to 1972 here. Now, this goes on at some considerable length if I was to open up everything here. I would suggest you have a look at Dev Bernadette Devlin's stuff there and Eamon McCann's War in an Irish Town particularly Eamon McCann, because he gives a good background into how NICRA started. And Con McCluskey down below, up off their knees, a commentary on the civil rights movement in Northern Ireland. I noticed the last time I looked on this, that was kind of restricted, but now the whole book is available, which is quite nice. Someone must have put the book up as an e-book or released it. In any case, here is the Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association. Now, I don't particularly love Wikipedia for contentious topics like this, but it will do as a good basic summary. NICRA, the Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association, was an organisation that campaigned for civil rights in Northern Ireland during the late 1960s and early 1970s. Formed in Belfast on, April 1960, on the 9th of April 1967, the civil rights campaign attempted to achieve reform by publicising, documenting and lobbying for an end to discrimination in Kent's Catholics in areas such as elections, which was subject to gerrymandering and property requirements, discrimination in employment, in public abuse housing and abuses of the Social Powers Act. Um, the genesis of the organisation lay in the emergence of a more self-confident professional middle class who, following the example of the US civil rights movement, noticed that following the example of the U.S. Civil Rights Movement. Who, Mr. Webb, was involved in the U.S. Civil Rights Movement? Was it people from, uh, I don't know, Mongolia? Boyats? Southeast Asians? No, it was black people mainly. Uh, that's why people from Ireland belt links with them. 
and why you will find people like Bernadette Devlin, who I will go to next, built links with them. Now, there was back and forth about it. Some people felt that a more militant approach was called for. Some people felt it should stay as a purely political thing. And Bernadette Devlin here, who, when she went to America, found that although she supported the black struggle, um, the Irish in America were quite capable of a spot of racism themselves. And she found that was awkward. But you will find here uh, one thing that Miss Devlin is particularly known for, Bloody Sunday. Having witnessed the Bloody Sunday massacre in Derry in 1972, Devlin was infuriated that she was later consistently denied the floor in the House of Commons by the Speaker, Selwyn Lloyd, despite the fact that Parliamentary Convention decreed that any member of Parliament witnessing an incident under discussion will be granted an opportunity to speak about it therein. The day following Bloody Sunday, Devlin slapped Conservative Home Secretary Reginald Maudlin across the face when he falsely asserted in the House of Commons that the Parachute Regiment had fired in self-defence on Bloody Sunday. Now, if I'm only supposed to speak about my own background, Mr Webb, you can see straight away that there is a link, and that's why many Irish people do make that link. Now, you have plenty of people in your comments who don't, who unfortunately I think are being played by you. I unfortunately think they are stupidly being played for you by where they allow you to create wedge issues, which you wedge in and try and divide Irish people. Let's go back a bit further in Irish history. And we'll go back to this. This is the lovely burning down of Cork in 1920. And this is what was left of Cork mm -hmm. after British forces burnt it down during the War of Independence. It was just a bit of a, a, a night out by the lads there, apparently. Oh, we have the wonderful black and tans that are mentioned in there. For those not familiar with the tans, there were a wonderful group of people. Friendly, kind, caring chaps recruited from former British servicemen who gained a, a wonderful, caring, kind reputation in, in Ireland. No, in fact, there were a bunch of... They gained a reputation as a bunch of complete bastards. Um, quite frankly, a well-deserved reputation. It must be said a certain percentage were probably actually Irish, which nobody likes to talk about, but it was there. And I will say that in right at, at the answer of talking about them, unlike the popular myth about them, they were not the sweepings of prisoners. They were mostly former military. Mr. Webb. <sighs> During the 1970s, you had people being arrested a lot right, left and centre for miscarriages of justice in, in the UK for being Irish. You had people falling downstairs and <laughs> over that. You had issues like um, no trial juries, diplock courts and stuff of that kind. Now, you're, as I said, your younger viewers will not remember that, but I'm old enough to remember it. And what I can't remember, I've read about and I'm well aware of it. So don't try and gaslight me because it won't work. And don't try and shut me down from talking by doing that. That won't work either.